In the last lesson, we created two types and data for those types. And in our application, we're just mapping over each of our types and rendering a property of those types. So let's build a generic search function for our types. In lesson three, we did a simple sort function, but as it turns out, the generic search function is going to be one of the easiest functions to implement. So we'll start with that. And we should start thinking about what a search function really is and how we can manipulate an array of data with a search. And really what searching is, is nothing more than filtering based on a query value. So we can think about filtering our widgets and our people array by putting a filter call before the map function. So we'll be filtering according to certain criteria and then mapping the results of what's left. And so in the filter function, we know we'll have our widget. And we can pass that right away to what we'll call generic search. And as I mentioned, we'll need some sort of query to compare it to. So we'll do that. And to create the generic search, I don't want to create the function directly in this component since it is generic and it'll be reused in other parts of the app, perhaps. So we're going to create a new folder called utils. And we'll create generic search.ts. So just a normal TypeScript file. And we'll export that as our default function. And again, since this is a generic function, we want to start with those angle brackets and we'll stick with the convention of capital T. And so we know in our application from the filter call, the first parameter will be not widget in this case, but the object of T itself. And we've also decided to pass a query for now, which is not defined. I'll just make that an empty query for now. And a query, which is a string. There's an additional issue here that we have our object and we have the query, but we have nothing to filter it on. And with this filter function, we want the predicate to return either true if it matches our query or false. So we can add that return type. And TypeScript's already complaining because I haven't returned anything yet. But then there's still one more thing missing. What exactly are we going to query on? And so Similar to what we saw in lesson three with our sorter, we're also going to define a property parameter, which is again going to use that key of T and we should add that to our app. So for now, since we're just listing the title, I'm going to also use title as our property to search on. So the first thing we'll do is strip off the value from the object. So the value will be object sub property. And TypeScript knows this is okay. Property is a key of T object is type T. So this is valid. And essentially we want to return value string and if that includes the query now already we're running into an issue because typescript is so smart 
we know that an object can have a variety of properties and just because we've accessed it here value isn't necessarily something that can be converted to string here so we have to build a type guard so if it's a string and we also know we can use to string on numbers. So add that as well. Oh, and this is includes, sorry. And then we're missing the default case. So for example, if this value is a function or something else, we're just going to return false as the default. That looks okay. And we just need to import that here. But this isn't really a complete solution. For now, we're searching on title, but it would probably be nice to be able to search on both the title and description. And for the person, perhaps we'd want to search on the first name, the last name, and the eye color. So we should extend the generic search function to accept an array of values or keys of the object that we want to search through. So I'm going to do that now in the app. And we'll hop into generic search to handle that functionality. So I'm going to refactor this property and call it properties. And we'll make it an array of key of T. And essentially we can keep this same logic, but now we have to do it for every property. So I'm going to map over those properties. And we'll apply, we need to store those values. I'll just call them expressions. And so TypeScript already tells us what this is and we can expect kind of what it is. It's an array of, of Boolean values. And in the case here for a match, we want to return true if just one of the keys has evaluated to true. That is, if only one of the keys, one or more of the keys matches the current query that we're considering. And so there's another useful built-in array function, which we can use, and that is sum. Not sum as an addition, but sum as in the determiner. And that is simply returning the expression. So this will evaluate to true if at least one expression in this array of expressions is true. It will only return false if all of them are false, which is exactly the functionality we're looking for. But we can do even better than this. We don't really need this array as a stored value. We can call sum directly as a replacement for map and return it directly. So we can do that now. Do this sum. And return going to format that. And there's one minor, minor optimization we can still make. And that is, if the query is empty, then we return true. So that is, if you're not searching for anything at the time, for example, you can imagine if the search bar is empty, then we're going to return everything anyway. And our filter function as we look at our data flow, our filter function won't be removing or hiding any widgets and we'll be mapping all of them as we expect. We can also choose to add a 
lowercase to this. I think that it's a more flexible search if you add these lowercase calls. And we also want to make the query to lowercase. But that depends on your use case. And you could even add this as another parameter. Um, for example, should be case sensitive. And do that here. So if, if it should be case sensitive, you would remove these lowercase conversions. else you would include them. So we can keep that in our signature. And I'm going to say false. We don't want it to be case sensitive. And now we can add this same type of call to the person list. And just to keep it more legible, we'll just change the name of the variable. And we see already TypeScript is complaining. And what did we say? We wanted to perhaps search on first name, last name, and eye color. And we see that IntelliSense is already giving us some suggestions for those parameters. And we'll also leave that case insensitive. And since we have this empty query optimization that returns true, we shouldn't see any change in our application. We should still see all of the data listed as this is kind of a pass through for now. So in this lesson, we created a robust generic search that can search a list of data based on multiple keys. And it maps over each of those keys and will return true if just one of those keys includes the query. And so for now, we just have a simple empty query, but in the next lesson, we'll start hooking up a interactive UI and we can actually test our search function in real time against both the widgets and the people data. Hi everyone, hope you enjoyed that lesson and that you learned something you can use in your own stack. I wanna mention that these few videos are just a preview of the full courses which I have on both Skillshare and Udemy. Um, and I put a link in the description below for both of those. So I encourage you to check those out. And if you do decide to take those courses, I sincerely appreciate it. Uh, and I also wanna mention that I don't want money to be the reason you can't learn from one of my courses. So if, if there's a problem there, just reach out to me and I can hook you up with a free version of the course. Uh, so that's all. I hope you uh, take a look and I hope you enjoy. Take care, guys.